Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to G3 Vehicle Auctions in Castleford. It's Thursday, so it's their economy sale, which they've got 200 plus cars here today. And some of them actually look really good. I think I'm gonna be able to get some, what I call forecourt fillers here today. This is their sort of lower end, so it's anything from a thousand pounds, generally speaking, up to about seven and a half thousand pounds, which normally would be the bottom end of my buying criteria. But I do quite want to try and fill up the forecourt a little bit more, keep the wheels turning at Barrow Motors. And I'm hoping there's some real gems here today and there's some quite interesting stuff as well. So let's get stuck in and see what we can find. Right, so I've got my catalogue and my bidding number, but what I actually always like to do, if I get time, is like make my own little list. Look at that. I've even put down the Auto Trader retail rating. And this time I'm gonna try something different because quite often I put down what the retail price is and then I put what my bid is gonna be. And I'll see the difference between the bid and the retail price and I might be tempted to go higher, but I've just, that's just a strict hard line what I can bid. So I'm gonna try and stick to that. So we'll try and work our way around and find the cars that we're interested in. We've got about 20 of them. One that was on my list, but I took it off, but I am still gonna keep my eye on is this one up here. A very cool BMW 640D in Estoril blue. 2013, don't know why I couldn't see the number plate, but there it is. It all looks good on its report, other than the tread on the rear tires is getting a bit low, unsurprising probably for this type of car. A really nice interior. I think it's about 121, 122,000 miles. So generally speaking for my forecourt, it's a bit too, leggy these days but normally i'd be all over it it's, this is where my heart comes into play and i still think that's a very cool car i had put that i would bid up to 5600 for that and i think it's probably about ten thousand pound car but what you take into account is as amazing as this looks and as cool as it looks as far as auto traders concerned who kind of dictate the market it's got a desirability score of two out of a hundred so you know it's like as desirable as hemorrhoids Apparently no one wants it, but I want it. So I don't know, you've got to use your head and your heart. I remember this being in my list. We've got Freelander 2 in white. This is a GS, I think. So it's like low spec manual cloth interior, but it is the 2.2. So kind of the engine to have, if you're going to have one. I can't remember the mileage. This is a problem. Uh, hasn't got a sticker on this one, so. 51, so maybe 49. Well, it's in the wrong place. It says it's black. I don't think that's... Oh, it is. So why is it say it's black? Maybe it's a... Hmm. Has it had a color change? I don't think so. Maybe that's just an anomaly on the thing, but it does say in this catalog, which I hadn't seen before, warning lights on dash, other warning light. I wonder what that is. We'll have to stick our head in the door at some point. That's on my list here. It's got a retail rating of 44 out of 100, so not huge. And I'd be willing to bid about three and a half grand on that. I got a feeling that makes it about six grand to retail, but we are gonna to wanna to stick our head in there. It's a bit smelly. It's actually a bit grubbier in here than I thought, to be honest. We will see. We will. Let's have a look in that door shut, is it? No. I wonder if we might have seen that it was wrapped or something. It would be a strange choice to go from black to white, I think. 53, which should be back here. Little VW up, exclamation mark, or as one of my previous customers called it, his VW UPI. This is, again, not my usual sort of stock because it's small, just first time car. It's not really our normal type of stuff, but just to get an extra car on the forecourt, even if we only make, let's say, a grand out of it, still a bit of money ticking in, keeps everyone busy. So it's 2014, one litre, great little three-cylinder engine, 81 and a half thousand miles. It's got a good report. And I have decided I will bid up to about two and a half grand. I've got a feeling it will go for stronger than that because I think everyone will want this on their forecourt. It's got a retail rating of 74 out of 100. Not sure I'll get anywhere near it, but keep an eye on it and see what happens. Walking past the Astra, not the Astra, the Vectra with a missing grill. Got a feeling this Sportage is one I'm interested in as well. And according to the retail rating, so is the rest of the world because it's 98 out of 100. Is that this one? Number, 50, uh, number 64, yes it is. 78 and a half thousand miles, 2014. 
all green report other than near side rear tyre is down to 3 mil and the rest are at 5 or 6. MOT till January next year. No service history, sadly. Maybe we could dig some up, I don't know, but like I say, it's 98 out of 100. It's quite a bright looking thing, inoffensive. It's, you know, so it's 10 years old, but I don't know why it is like 14, 15 plates to me seem like they're only like five years old, just showing my age, but I think this would be a very easy seller. Manual, it's locked up unfortunately. They look quite modern inside. Interior looks quite good. I have got myself a bid limit of 3,200 quid on that one. I should have written down the retail rating, or the retail price just for your benefit. But as I said, I, I don't want to see it because I just want to know what my bid price is and stick to it so I don't get carried away. This is going to be two different lanes. So this will be a red lane, I think. Have we covered everything in this red lane? I think so. Then we've got black lane. So let's head over that way. There may be one more in here. I was interested in, but I shouldn't buy. It's not sensible stock. I did actually quite like this Z4, but it's just the wrong time of year. I'm freezing here. Uh, you know, who really wants a convertible? Yes, it's a hard top convertible, but still. Check out the 525i, three litre petrol, automatic. Oh, with like bronze door trim things on. Um. I like these for some reason. Just remind me of the M5 look. They just look like a big, big comfortable cruiser, but it would be a very poor decision on my part to bid on this, so I won't. But maybe we'll see what it makes anyway. 78,500 miles, it's 2009. It's got a full clean report, loads of service history, um, I think. Oh no, one service history, loads of MOT record. MOT until, well, it's got about 11 months MOT on it. This would clean out really nice if this was the sort of stuff you have, like maybe like modern classic type stuff, but obviously that's not really what we sell, so we're better off sticking to what we know. Well, that mocker is one of them, so... The numbers all jump from like one through to, let's say, a couple hundred, and then it jumps to the next one, which starts around about 300, I think. So that's 482, and it might be working the opposite way. Tell you what, we'll just look at the ones as we come up on them. Dacia Sandero Stepway. This is in my list. I know it is. Why wouldn't it be? Lot number 470. It's got a retail rating of 88 out of 100. Full clean report. It's 2016. Just under 63,000 miles. MOT until April next year. Two towing eyes on the passenger seat. I don't know. Towing eye in a wheel brace. Is that indicative of it's been used or? Very smoky and there is a cigarette burn in the front seat. A few scuffs on the back bumper, but that would touch up pretty good. I just think these things are nice, bright, inoffensive, easy to sell, but sadly the interior is not great. There's a rip in the back of the seat here as well. Now if I was to retail this, then it's all things I'd have to sort, including the burn. Oh, there's a Fairly decent dent there as well, and it's right on the seam, so that would take a fair bit of work. So originally, I had a bid of 2,700 here. I'll adjust that to 2,000. I don't think I'll get anywhere near it. I think someone will go for it and won't care, but I do. Uh, mocha, I got a feeling that's one of ours as well. It's a Mocha 4x4. Could do with a good buff. It's... Uh, a very glamorous shade of brown. But, as bad as that sounds, customers don't always mind it. Manual, leather interior. Smells, mm, smells okay, a bit smoky. 71,000 miles. Full clear report. So what number is this? 457. It's got a retail rating of 97 out of 100. And I thought I would bid about three grand on it. I think we do okay with it still at that, so we'll leave that as is. Then, what have we got? Mocha. Have we seen the C4 Cactus yet? No, I think that's going to be that back there, isn't it? Here we are. C4 Cactus in like a very nice like Palmer Violet. Uh, so this is the 1.6 HDI, which for me is the engine to have. You may by this point have seen another video where I bought one of these accidentally with a 1.2 PureTech engine, um, which is rubbish and it's causing me no end of problems. 
But this one, as I say, is 1.6 turbo diesel, uh, MOT till March next year, full clean report. Looks like it would clean up quite well. What did I say about this one? 82 out of 100 retail rating. Very grubby inside, but not smoky, which is a big plus. These engines are usually pretty good. What do these fail on, like turbo actuators and boost solenoids and things, I think. Especially the older ones, maybe the new ones are better, but we'll, we'll watch it go through, see if it's smoky or playing up with anything. What about this side? It'll clean up, it'll look all right. Um, oh, this one's one as well. This would be our highest rated car of the day. Foxhall Insignia VX Line, two litre CDTI. Look at the rims, Toby. Right, so this one, it is a cloth interior. It smells pretty good. It's an automatic. I can't remember. I don't think these Vox automatics are very glamorous or smooth, but I don't remember any horror stories of them being really bad, but I could be wrong. We'll see. It is higher mileage, but we'll see how it goes through. I think I've put down a bit of about two and a half grounders. I think it will sell for five maybe a bit more but i think i was being cautious just because of what it is i'm just being won over by the uh i really like these wheels i don't know why i like these style of wheels look at the fiat doblo with the light bar on the front that's your kind of thing baby okay racing gold the off-road lights on the front it's a, it's a manuel Six-speed manual then. Five-seater with a big boat. Lovely. Oh, this is on our list. Astra GTC. 1.4 petroleum, I believe. I still think these look quite modern. And they're quite cheap, but they're... Uh, I think they look good value, as long as the gearbox is all right. What they say it was a 1.4, wasn't it? I don't know of any real horror stories of those. I know they're really gutless. Unless it's the turbo version. Nearly 99,000 miles, but it's got a clear report. It's got MOT until November, so about, about a month's MOT on it. Um, what do we say the bid was? Four, six, three. It's 94 out of 100, so it should be really popular. It should sell really quickly, and I am putting down a, a bid of about 3,000. So, again, we'll just have to see what happens. But oh, what about the Q7? See, this isn't in my list, don't worry. But I think the cap price on this is like, three grand crazy isn't it i mean that would be just your first bill on fixing it most likely but, uh, it's a lot of metal for three grand isn't it oh we've got a fake s badge on there for sq7 it's not signia astra gcc we've seen the sandero i should take these off as i've seen them really there's a nissan note over there i know we came past that before let's find a way through here somewhere I did have this Evoke on my list as well, but it didn't make the shortlist. I tried to be more sensible. I do like the fire ends red though. The only reason being is a few of these that I've had, no problems with the engine because that is the 2.2, but I just have problems with like transfer cases. So like the rear differential or whatever, I don't know, I'm not a mechanic, but it needs, it's, I mean, they're only about 250 quid, but this one is, on 120,000 miles, basically. But this is the sort of thing, if you need a big margin out of a car and you're willing to do a little bit of work, this would 100% be on my list. If this was under 100,000, I would be all over it, 100%. 119,500 miles, full clear, uh, assured express report. MOT till December, it's the automatic. I mean, it looks well in fire ends red i think it is it's a bit of a flat tire on there but i don't nothing that looks too worrying it would be what's no it's not on here so i can't tell you what the retail rating is but so we got on my phone i bet you it'll be high it might surprise me but 70 out of 100 so pretty high but a lot of these maybe it's the disco sports that i see like this that are like 99 out of 100 retail rating of 7,750 quid basically, part exchange valuation of about 4,000 pounds. I expect that will go for about four grand. It's like I say, 
3,750, you take, take your fees out of it maybe, three and a half grand, just over three grand of a margin to start off with. Tempting, but we're trying to be sensible. We move on. Now, is this mocker on our list? 447. Nope, I obviously didn't like that for a reason. Uh, it says engine smoking on this one, on the report. Oh, here's one. Is this on our list? 435. I think I removed it from our list. Oh, I'll tell you why. I really like the look of this. A4. Uh, what, is it? what do they call it? Cross country? Off road? All road. A4 all road. It's on 125,000 miles. It's white. It's the all road. It's got nice alloy wheels on it. These things are like seriously popular. Well, they always have been for me. Downside is it is a manual and it's cloth interior. And I think what put me off in the end, because I was tempted to have a dabble, even though it was too high the mileage, is it's just a bit untidy. There's a bit of rust on the boot lid and just a few bits and pieces. Of course, it's white, so it needs like a real good decontamination and get all the stuff off of the paint. But it would come up looking great. And I think there would be a good margin in that for someone who you know wanted to put the time and effort into it, but it's not me anymore, I'm afraid. Exactly a little Nissan Note. 2015 Nissan Note N Tech. 1.2, 61,500 miles. All good on the report, other than three of the tyres are down to about three mil of tread, so still legal, but probably won't replacing when it comes to prep. And it's got about nine months of MOT on it. You would still end up putting a new one on, but I like this because it just looks quite a nice, bright, clean looking thing like really minimal prep to get this cleaned up and put on your forecourt really nice and clean smelling in there get the feeling it's been looked after so that is lot number 412 on my list here retail rating of 95 out of 100 and i have allowed myself a bid of 3200 on that right next to it is a freelander 2 which generally speaking probably a bit too old but it's only on it's under 75,000 miles clean report MOT till December. Uh, it's the automatic as well, which is what I prefer. No sat nav, so it's like a lower spec one. Um, cloth interior. But these are always really good news. They're, they're still really popular. Oh, they've still held their value quite well. I think if it sounds all right, and it's straight enough, then I would be interested in having a bid on that for sure. Yeah, another GS. But yeah. We'd have no problem saying that whatsoever. Now, Ford Eco Boost. Everyone's worst nightmare, but good opportunity for profit, I think. Especially being the ZTEC S. I preach this in our podcast all the time. People ask him what sort of stuff should they buy, and I say, well, get like the ZTEC S, get the Titanium X, get the S Line versions, because people will search them out and come and find them. And this thing, you know, it looks right. This. Let's find it on here. 96 out of 100 retail rating. I got a feeling the retail price was about five and a half, maybe a bit more. Play it safe, I am allowing myself a bit of 2,500. As long as I'm happy with everything, let's see when I'm looking around it. It all seems good. It's got that very distinct Ford smell, which is neither good nor bad, but it's good in the sense that it doesn't smell of smoke. It'll be really interesting to see. Well, that's a bit of a shame. I hadn't spotted that before. So it would need front wing painting. So probably a little patch on a wing like that probably get done for about 100 quid. So should we adjust our bid by 100? I don't think we'll get anywhere near it, to be honest. I think someone else will be all over that. Despite everyone saying, don't buy EcoBoost, don't buy PureTex, don't buy Ingeniums, plenty of people still will. There's plenty of idiots like me out there. We've only got a few more to look at, so oh, check out the uh, bad boy Honda Civic GTR. What a machine. There's not an angle where it looked good. This will be for nothing. This will make a good track car like the last one I had and obviously got blown up. Oh, I don't think this is even, this isn't even the one I was thinking of. There's another one somewhere that's got a massive wang on it. That's interesting. There's another one that's got a big black wing on it. It doesn't look like they've taken it off of here. I don't know. Either way, we won't be buying it, so no need to look any further. All right, we're looking for 315 and 341. Uh, 341 will be here then. Suzuki SX4 S Cross. What's it saying with this? 70. 
5,000 miles, just under. Full clear report, MOT has expired. But I don't expect that will matter too much. It will, obviously you don't want to pay as much because you've got other risk of putting it through an MOT, but more importantly, if you wanted this transported from here to me, it would be about three times as much because they can't drive it down with a trade plate driver. They'll have to deliver it. So 88 out of 100 retail rating. I had a bid of 3,100, but I'm going to reduce that. Or did I take that into account already? I'll leave it. We'll see what happens. Remind me that it's got no MOT. Right, then one left, which is an Audi A6 Avant 315. Check out the Golf R. I don't remember seeing that going through today. I don't know, I think this will be other ones. This is for another sale. Um, ah, here we are, here's our A6. Audi A6, 87 out of 100. I think this is about 10 grand retail, so I've got a bit here, about seven. Just remind myself of the mileage. I've got a feeling it's like just under 100. Paint, definitely want some attention to bring that back to life. Wants four tyres as well. MLT to December. Hasn't got the SD card for the sat nav. Mileage is 93 and a half thousand miles. It's like borderline of what I should be buying. It's the right sort of thing, but it is slightly high on the miles, which I would have always preached makes it really good value and will seem really good value to people. And it will, I and mean, there should be a good margin in it. But of course, there's more potential for there to be issues crop up. So I think we'll play it by ear. If it seems like it's going really cheap, I'm just gonna have to snap it up on iron, just gonna have to take the risk. But yeah, I think there's a couple more up here, but yeah, there's a couple more we'll go and check that are gonna be like the first couple to go in. Kia Sportage, these are usually very good news. This is a 90 out of 100 retail rating. Nice and modern looking inside, leather interior. It's got heated seats. Yeah, heated seats, sat nav, cruise control. All that good stuff in there. And it's only on 54,000 miles. This should be very good news. I'm surprised this is in this sale rather than one of their nicer ones because I've got a bid of about 9,000 on it. I don't know what it is. I'd never normally think twice about spending 9,000 pounds or more. In fact, my usual sort of bid price that I normally want to go for is about 15,000 pounds, 10 to 15. For some reason, because it's amongst the cheaper stuff, I'm like cautious of it. Our last one is the Qashqai. I've already had a little look inside the Qashqai because we sat inside and we did some filming with G3 and currently there's other people sat in the back of it. It's like quite a nice thing. Let me just tell you the details on it. It's 76 out of 100 retail rating and I've got a bid on there of 9,300. It's this one here, the, the 68 plate white. I can't remember what the mileage is, but I don't want to go around there and interrupt their filming. We'll leave it there. Should we just have a wander around and just see if anything else catches our eye? Try and get a glimpse at it now before it catches my attention when it's going through the hall and I get carried away and I think, ooh, shiny thing. Quite like that, but it's the wrong time of year, I guess. It also has do not move written on the window, so that would be interesting. Vauxhall Mariva would probably be good news. 66 plate, 67,000 miles, all the green ticks, MOT for about nine months, five services. Right, why did I discount this originally then? What's the engine on it? 1.4, so I assume petrol. Hasn't got a V5, maybe that put me off, but I was trying to be quite brutal with cutting down on what I was looking at. Retail, 4,600 pounds. 54 out of 100. Uh, I'll tell you why, because even though I don't mind having some of these cheaper stuff around, I still want to keep like a bottom line of 5,000 pounds for the four quarter Barrow Motors. So I guess that's probably why I discounted it. We might still make a note of it. Oh, we've, got, we've got quite a few to potentially bid on here today, haven't we? Really? We've, we've got through looking at these cars quite quickly today. That's because rather than having a list of like what started out of 47 cars I was semi-interested in, I've been sensible about it and I whittled it down. Will that work in our favour today though? Being more, I don't know, 
analytical about it. We will find out. As I keep saying, we will find out. You'll find out. This is one I had originally in the long list, but I, I discounted it. Do you know what? I just really haven't had that much luck with Countryman's. Um, it just looks good, doesn't it? I kind of like this grey mushroomy colour. It's got the nice wheels. It's an S Cooper SD. I think it's manual. No, it's not. It's automatic. I'm rethinking it again. Problem is, is well, it's only 100 and, 109,000 miles, basically. All clear report, apparently. And it's got MOT until May 2025. Oh. This scuttle panel's broken. Well, it's only like a, it's a two-piece thing, so you wouldn't need the whole one, you'd, but you'd have to just crack there, and it's crack there as well. It's also like 11, 12 years old. I've got a feeling this has got like a cat clean of like two grand. It just seems crazy, doesn't it? That, that would be a 2,000 pound car. Nice leather interior. Oh flappy paddles with like someone's I can't believe they're standard that looks like someone's put like aftermarket flappy paddle extension things on them but maybe not that looks like the old like E90, E92 E91 style BMW ones which I know obviously they are BMW it's got like the push for down and pull for up interesting I'm not going to bid on it Maybe we'll try and remember to watch it go through and see what it makes. It's quite a nice thing though. It's really tempting when you're here. Oh, here's another one that I was interested in. This would have been right up my Strasse. Ford Mondeo, Titanium X. It's got all the thingies on it. Snowflake wheels, Manuel. It's got one of my favorite interior. This thing would be so comfortable to drive. Nice like half Alcantara interior says it's not running okay and the engine management light is on. What is it, a two litre, oh, it's a 2.2 TDCI. Don't know anything about them. And the MOT runs out in four days. It's just not worth, not worth the risk, is it? But that is like, all right, it's 12 years old, but I still think it looks really modern. That looks smart on a forecourt. This is why I'm saying like, I like the things that have got the, the nice kits on them. Even this. Skoda, sort of, whatever they call it. I don't know if they call it an all-road or whatever. It just, on your forecourt, it looks like a nice bit of stock versus, let me try and find something that I think is just a bit dull for your forecourt. Or red Seat Leon. It just doesn't, even though same year, might even be the same sort of value, just doesn't look as nice on your forecourt. Doesn't draw people in, I think. Not the old... Uh, Range Rover Sport will make. Looks like it's collapsed down on its suspension. This, I can't remember. What was, let's have a go around and have a look. I got a feeling this would go for nothing, like 1500 quid. ABS warning light and brake wear indicator light. So it probably just needs brakes, brake pads, or even just a sensor. Hundreds, just under 130,000 miles. It's got MT until, what do we say? Num first month was May 2025. Uh, yeah, should we? I, I think I don't actually. I don't think I'll be able to retail check this because it's a '59 plate, and I think that's that's like the cut-off year. But yeah, I think about 1,500 quid. Got a feeling this car might have had a replacement boot. It's subtle, but there are some slight differences in shape. Just before we stop and get a cup of tea and wait for this sale to kick off, there's one other over here that I was. I was on my long list, but I've taken off. Let's go and find out why, see if I can remember why I took it off. That's a really nice colour, that. What do you think of that colour, Toby? I would call that, probably incorrectly, denim. Does that seem like a fair assessment? Mm. Yeah. Stonewash, denim. Anyway, ah, engine not running well. Uh, engine management light illuminated, but most importantly, the SD card for the sat nav is not present. Shame though. This oh, it was a 1.6 TDI. I thought it was a 2 litre TDI because I did this in a 2 litre TDI, which is like quite a little weapon, really. Tiny little car with a 2 litre TDI, especially if you remap it. And absolutely fly. A lot of these things, though, of course, I am just trying to play it safe, but a lot of these things, 
if it's got says it's got the engine management light on, it could be like nothing. It could be the fact that the battery's gone flat and they've jump started it and things like that. You need to listen to it go through. You probably find it'll be all right. And that, in fact, that's how I have bought a lot of cars in the past. We've talked to a lad over there. He was saying he's new in the trade and he was looking at. It. He really liked a Golf, but it says that it's got engine problems. And he's like, oh, I like taking a risk though. And I mean, that is exactly how I would. But back in the day, now I'm just trying to play it a bit more sensible. As Toby's pointed out, it has got a bit of a doink in the wing there, a bit of a schnoingle. What? So, just sometimes you kind of like, two different things that happen at auction. It's either really easy to talk yourself out of every car and you won't buy it. And then maybe you break through that barrier and you're like, right, if I was bidding this online, I wouldn't have spotted that. And if I don't buy it, I won't be able to do anything with it. I won't be able to make any money from it if I don't own it. And then you start trying to just like, just, nah, that'd be all right. Nah, that, I'd probably fix that. And then I could probably do the wing. And then I could it's like, you think, what am I doing? Maybe that's just me in ADHD. I don't know. But uh, yeah, right. I think we've seen the bulk of things. Grab ourselves a little brew and then sort some time. <laughs> Sounds all right, doesn't it? I forgot it was a petrol. No rattles or anything. Try to make a strong start, get right in there, buy it. It's already over my bid. I think I was nine two, nine three. There we are. Toby's theory of the uh, the more expensive cars won't do well in the cheap sale. Stadonia provisional as well. We might be in for a tough day. Oh. It's early days. We will get in there. When the excitement settled down, I think our next one is going to be on the next lane. Our next one here will be 20, which is that 640D, but 10 lots away on the other lane is that Audi A6. So let's go and have a look. See if we can go and hear that running. Someone else is already in there giving it a rev for us, so that's. You know, we listen to the exhaust while he's doing it. James Hardy from Chop's Garage must have been here. Look at the paint job on that. That is indistinguishable from a Chops Garage job. Looks like we might well have stiff competition on this. Oh, this is one of ours as well, isn't it? Behind it, is that? How do we rule that one out? Oh, we haven't got this one in, so why didn't we have this one in? Was it? Oh, it adds. Maybe I didn't spot this one. Maybe it's high mileage. Yeah, 132,000, so some very fetching door handle stickers. Check them out. Just a bit too leggy for me to really bother with. Not because I, don't, I wouldn't like it or I don't think I'd make profit out of it, but if something went wrong with it and I had to fix it, I'd be really annoyed that I hadn't just bought a more sensible car. Looks like the touch is working all right. It's not struggling with it. Hot line, you've gone. Ali, A6, man. I had noticed the, see the crumple down the rear arch? So that's going to need a paint job, I hadn't spotted that before. Five, you can get it. One more, 
I'll leave it. Go on then. Thank you. That's all the dishes. One one. Five. One place. Lovely. Well, we got one. We broke the seal. I was going to bid up to seven on that, but then we spotted it probably needs a bit of paint. So we're allowing for that. I think we got it. Pretty decent price. I think that's about ten grand retail. So quite happy with that. Let's go and have a look at our six forty D because that must be coming very soon. Right, we're on lot ten, so we're ten lots away. This is going to be an interesting. I sh really, really, really shouldn't bid on this, but if it goes cheap, then I can't, I'm only human. I can't help myself. I didn't spot this earlier. This is one that I originally had in my long list, but removed because it just looked. It was a grade five for a start, which would be interesting to look at. See if I really do think it is a grade five, because otherwise it should be really good news. So it'd be a 1.5. Is that 1.5 Eco Boost or is that 1.5 TDCI? Ah, okay. Hasn't had MOT in, since February 2023. Does that just mean it's been sat up in some garage somewhere waiting for something to be fixed? All four tyres are down to two mil a tread. Otherwise, it says it's all good. It's just grade five apparently, but. I would have said that was a, probably like a grade four car. Not one for us. If it hasn't had MOT for two years. If there was one car here that I would pick to drive home, it would probably be the 640D because it would just be, it is a Grand Tour after all. Smooth as you like. This is where I do something stupid and buy a car just for the sake of it being comfy to drive home. Uh, with, with free fuel as well, after tank of fuel, he said. Uh, problem is, that probably will sit on the forecourt forever and a day, and I'll resent it. I hate myself. I hate G3 for selling it to me, for allowing me to bid. Right, next one on the... I never remember which one's which. I think whichever. The one on the other side is the Suzuki SX4. And then after that, it's the white Freelander on this side. Pretty busy today. Oh, glides along. I think it's been lowered, which doesn't really help it. I want to know what was stuck on the arches. Looks like they've fitted the spoiler with like tiling grout. I think my, my maximum without even having seen it was 5.6. Yes or no, I'm selling it Oh. Oh. Didn't see that. This is why you, you need to be there when it goes through, not just in... It's so hard to see down there when you've got the cars packed in. Our body shops are really, like, quite busy at the minute as well. I only had a bit of 3,100, so... It's got to be 500 quid worth of work. So, let's say two and a half, two six. But it'll do a lot more than that. Then if people can fix those sorts of things themselves, got a bargain, we we missed the SX4, but we might be able to find out how much it went for. But either way, it wasn't going to be for us, and I'd rather speak to nice people like that. Uh, right, we got about 40 before our Eco Boom Fiesta, about 25 or so for the Freelander 2. So let's wander down and hang around the Freelander 2, I guess. And see is this one automatic? I can't remember. No, manual. Just checking our warnings, but it's just that our smart key is not close enough. Looks right to me. Three and a half is our bid on that, so feeling that confident. 
Maar zijn twee doelen dat gaan we de drie met de Right, another one done. It's going to look lovely on our forecourt, that. Let's have a look at the service history walls, just remind myself. It's quite important on an eco boost. Three services on 66,000 miles. To be fair, I've got a white Fiesta like this at the farm. I can take a wing off of. Technically, it stands. But he's not using it, so. Did I say I wanted to put on the app or not? Oh, yeah, we've got a, got a VW up going through that. We better go and check out. Literally the next one in. Too good for me. Still a good little bike. That was a really nice, tidy little car, but I'm just greedy. I want a bigger margin. But we kind of did say, I think, that you're probably not going to get it in that car. Just in time to hear it start. Oh, like a sewing machine. So the Sportage, we didn't get anywhere near it, but I think the Wink girls may have bought it. So um, Jodie and Joanna, Jodie and Joe, Jojo and Joe, are from here from Wink Cars. So I think it's their first day bidding at future auctions as well. There's no friends in business. I could have bid against them, but it went higher than I wanted to spend anyway. What did I want to spend? I wanted to spend 3-2, and I think it went for 3-4 or 3-5, so. It's quite a nice straight thing though, wasn't it? The eco boom. I had put down a bid of 2-5, but then I saw the wing, and I said 2-4. I haven't really bid on these at auction. I wouldn't do it, I'm, not very, I'm normally on an online auction, so I wouldn't have the confidence, but it seems all right to me. I'm going to do what I said I wasn't going to do, and I'm going to retail check it to get the retail price. So I think competition's quite strong for it. Retail was at five thousand and forty-two pounds, so it's going to be five grand really. Trade is two six. Ninety-six out of a hundred. I probably already told you. We can go more than two five. For a two grand margin, we could go up to three grand, but then we have got to take into account our auction fees, which is probably what I've done already. So you would have thought an eco boost, everyone would run from it. I think everyone likes it because it looks value, which is why, exactly why I think it would be good on a forecourt, because it looked value. It's a really smart, modern looking car. And really, I guess, it should be worth more than five grand retail. It's only because the skepticism of the eco boost engines that, uh, that they're cheaper. All right, let's go and see what we can do. Probably pay too much, slightly, but there's money in it for sure. Quite happy with that. Uh, on to the next one. This is another car that was in the long list, but then I realised it was a 2009, which is like 15 years old, and I don't know what the hell I was thinking about. It's probably I was just blinded, like all these lads, by the big pimping wheels on it. And then I came to my senses. But that does play into my theory of 
if your car stands out and looks a bit different when you're scrolling through the pictures, because if I'm scrolling through the auction catalogue, anything that just catches my eye, I'll click on it, and then I'll come back and vet it all later. It works the same when you're selling cars. Someone's scrolling through Auto Trader or eBay or whatever, your car stands out. They're going to stop and have a look at it, aren't they? It gives you a better opportunity, I think. But I don't want to buy that. Or what I do want is some of this really just nice, clean stuff like that Nissan Note. I didn't think I'd be getting excited about stuff like that, but... We, oh, we got the other Freelander too, so... Again, we got a bit of a scuff down this side, which we hadn't noticed. Very lightly dented, but that would all buff off and it... And next to nothing to do there. It is 13 years old. To remind myself how much MOT this has got till December. Five services. Clean report. So as a reminder, this one is 66 out of 100. I think I got a bit of four and a half on it because I think the retail is something along the lines of 7.7. Seven. So it's slightly older, but it's a nice price to be on our forecourt. It will clean up really nice. They're really popular, especially in our area. The 2.2 and the automatic, usually not too much trouble for us. We'll see what happens. When was the last time we saw below well done? Have you got four and a half grand? We're gonna get there, come on. You still not here at four and a half, is it? Is it like that? Come on. Start me. Four. Four. We jump four. Four thousand grand in the hall there. It's not you. Four. Oh, thank you, sorry. Because we see good under the hall. On sale, four one. Four two. Four three. Jump. Four thousand three grand. Back up down four three B. B in your ass. Very happy with that. Oh, went for a bit more of the clean stuff since we're making really strong money, which makes sense. This was the uh, Ford Mondeo Titanium X that I would have thought would have been really good news. I don't think there's anything too wrong with it. It does look like it's on a slant a little bit though, so it might have a broken spring. But that was the one that said it was had a cross for smoking and a cross for not running nicely. It looks pretty good, and I think something very minor. And then we've got the uh, the Mini. I did say we'd see what this one would go for, won't we? So we'll watch what happens. Because I think it's a couple of grand or something like that. I got that one completely wrong, didn't I? I must have uh, misremembered the figures. That may be the worst Dacia I've ever seen in my life. I don't know what the story with this black one is, because that looks... I must have discounted this already. 52,000 miles, no service history. 1.4 diesel. Got a long MOT. Maybe I discounted it because it's only 20 out of 100 retail rating in it. The retail is 4.7. Max I want to bid would be two four. 
Uh, we'll go for a lot more than that. 2-1. Two, two, Oh, here's the Range Rover, let's see what that does. Just a bit of quick maths on that Dacia though, because that would have been 2,750 plus fees of about 400 quid, let's say. 3,150. You'd have about 1,600 quid gross in it before you get it transported back or whatever. I guess if you're local, still not a bad, bad thing, is it? If it's got very minimal prep. Here we are. 1,500 quid now on sale. Fifteen hundred quid for a Range Rover Sport. Right, we got a mocker coming through. Four five seven. A little way away. Let's go and have a wander around. How retro is that? Tom Tom edition. Back in 2010, when it was a massive selling feature that your car had a Tom Tom sat nav in it. This is the one that's rated 97 out of 100. Popularity. Is that Dacia for us as well? Nice mileage. I think it would go for strong money, so I think I might have to reassess these as they go through. Because as we said, the market is quite strong at the minute. But that will end up being reflected when it's on the forecourt as well, so... You've got to be in it to win it. You can't sell empty spaces. We'll be turning into like a Dacia franchise soon. We've got three Dacia joggers there. Can we buy a Dacia earlier? Can't remember. Three grand. Oh, but I oh, ought to reassess it, hadn't I? As I said, seventy-one thousand one hundred and sixty-two miles. Retail valuation of five thousand and eighty-six pounds. What this the MOT was? March next year. Higher demand than normal. Yeah, I think my three grand bid was already quite strong, to be fair. Because if I want a two grand margin, it'd be £3,086 bid. But that doesn't take into account fees, which would go on top, which would make it even more expensive. That makes sense. So the bid really should be like two seven. Oh, we're going to leave the quick fire rounds to the end because we got lot number 460 is the C4 Cactus. 461 directly after is the Insignia. And then 463 is the Astra GTC. And then a Sandero Stepway, just seven lots after that. What did they do, 16 now? Right, I've only got two and a half for the cactus and the insignia each. I really like the colour of that, but it's not really hard, it's a bit on the cheaper end, isn't it? This is the like most highly rated car of the day.
three to fifth original and so on. Where one inclines three, two, the great net. Good effort. One to five, 33. Online. Try the double up. Six and a half mile over the V5 screen. Right, let's go and have a look at our GTC. Not many of these are it's got a warning on the dash saying change engine oil, but you know, that's a case of service here, not the end of the world. What did we say? 94 out of 100 retail rating, and I was going to give three grand for it. Let's see. I think the prices are working the other way around. Normally you get cheaper deals at the end of the day and they're getting stronger. Maybe it's because everyone's hanging around, waiting until they get their opportunity to have a deal. Uh, all we got left is this stepway, Sandero. And, oh, the, what do we say about this one? Because I've, I've scratched two, I've scratched 700 quid off of the, uh, my valuation for it because of some damage on it. Oh, is it? Dented in on the door. Pitch. Ah, oh, is this the smoky one with all the burns and everything in it? Yeah. Let's have a look at what else is out there. You know what is left. The Evoke. I said I wouldn't buy. Right. Let's go and have a look at the Evoke. Let's have a look at your catalogue that's in your bag, isn't it? That has got a retail price of 7,750 quid. Um, retail rating of 70 out of 100 and there's a lower supply than normal so here's where you could be onto something because cap clean is four and a half grand if you wanted a two and a half grand margin out of that you could bid up to let's say 4,900 plus fees Good colour combo, what have you got? 45 on mine. 4,500 grand up into the line of 4 5 bit. On line of 4,500 grand before 6 7 bit. On sale 48 in the hall. 4,800 grand, you're, that's not your line of in the hall. 48 to bit, that's it again, B. 4,800 grand up into the hall, but the hammer is off, I'm selling it. 4 8 bit down for 9 net. 5 in the hall, 5,000 grand I've got. 4 in the hall, 5 1 net, 5 1 to bit. Thank you, Joe. Five on line, two net, five thousand two hundred men. Hit that one again than me. Five thousand two hundred men. It's online and so on. Fair warning. Online twice. Five two. Sam, nice call. Try it. Right. So that is it. The sales have ended. We had quite a successful day here today. There was a lot of a really nice selection of good stock, and I think focusing down what I was looking at really helped out. And I think I've bought three or four cars. I've got an Audi A6 Avant, and I've got two Freelander 2s. So that'll be it for this video. If you've enjoyed it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe. Not only will you see updates on all of these vehicles that we've bought here at Auction Today when you watch the Barrow Motors Weekly, because they'll be there. It just follows us in our day-to-day -day business life. But I'm also giving away a £4,000 Tudor watch as well, completely free as soon as we hit 100,000 subscribers. So the sooner you hit subscribe, the sooner we get to 100,000, the sooner I'm giving away a £4,000 watch, just like I gave away a two and a half grand tag you before. So that is it for this video. I've had a great day. We've got a long drive home, so we're gonna hit the road. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.